Hey friends, welcome to another episode. We are continuing on with the 30 paintings in 30 days challenge. Day nine. I'm, I must pat myself on the back. I'm impressed that I've managed to keep up this well. Um, yeah, so let's jump in. So I haven't painted a fish in many a years. So I wanted to balance some of my favorite animals with some that I'm not familiar with. And I thought this was going to be a really good opportunity. Um, like I kind of mentioned in my video that had to do with the snake, I am not used to painting things like scales. And you know, this challenge, I'm going to be learning a lot, but I kind of want to force some lessons on myself. So yeah, that's why I was sure to add some animals that had different textures like scales so that I can practice. So as I was painting this particular fish, and sort of same thing with the snake as well, is I realized that balancing your details is really, really important. At least for my art style and the way that I like my paintings to look. Now, everybody's different. Um, there are definitely artists out there that absolutely love the detail phase and want 100% of their painting to be completely detailed. And if that's you, that's great. That used to be me, to be honest. But one of the important things you have to recognize is that we are artists and we're also people and people are dynamic and they change and evolve over time. And I find that my art style is definitely developing into something that balances detail with what I like to call chaos. And I absolutely adore it. I find it is, <laughs> I'm able to embrace parts of myself that I didn't used to, and it's just such a journey. So with a subject like this that has scales, I needed to be careful about where I was actually putting that detail. I wanted to make sure that, you know, you could tell that this fish has scales, but I didn't want to get bogged down with all of this crazy detail, which frankly would have taken a really long time to do, but also it had the potential to become really distracting to the eye. And that's not really what I'm about. I want the eye of the viewer to basically have a pretty clear path that it's going to take. So. That's one of the great things about art, especially when you're conscious about your composition and your level of detail and colors and saturation, is that you can kind of dictate where the eye is gonna be going and it makes for a much more enjoyable viewing experience. Um, yeah, so I had to kind of be careful about where I was placing my detail, thinking about where it would make the most impact, where I could get more loose and impressionistic and yet still leave that impression that, oh, okay, these are scales without getting in there with a teeny tiny fine detailing brush and actually carving out every single one of those scales. So that was a really wonderful lesson. And I find myself applying this lesson to fur even. Lots of, it can be very tempting sometimes to completely detail all of your fur. As in, like, even the more receding parts of your painting, so like if you're painting a portrait or something, the parts of the animal that are a little further in the background, it can be tempting to perfectly detail all of that as well. But that's something I'm personally trying to get away from, and instead, being more strategic about where I place my detail. It makes for a more, a more harmonious and pleasurable experience for the viewer, and also, it's a lot faster, too. <laughs> All right, so that brings us to the end of today's video. Tomorrow is the 10th painting. So, oh my goodness, almost a third done, yay! Which means that you're gonna start to see some of these animals recycled a little bit since I'm doing each animal three times. All right, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.